tonight, we've got Terraforming Azure, boldly going beyond Azure RM. We are going to be rife with Star Trek puns this evening with the Azure Terraformer, Mark Tenderholt. Mark, welcome to the show. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, doing, doing well. Better than I deserve. Thanks, man. Before we get into it, let's do a couple of show notes. If you are in the live studio audience, we are paying attention. We are responding to your queries, dear listener, and uh, making sure that you guys get all of your tonight Azure questions, Terraform questions, and and anything in between, T uh, Tinderholt questions. If you want to know about Mark, he's he's a font of knowledge in all things. I am completely solo tonight, abandoned, bereft, stranded by Shala, Roger, and Sean. They're off doing things allegedly far more important than this. I, I Eating a turkey it. sandwich, I mean, you know. I, I complained. <laughs> <laughs> and see, she, she's actually in the audience watching right now. And <laughs> Whoa, that's she, so cool. It's like, it's like she, she could have been here. She could have been here and, and uh -huh. no. She's, she's also actually over on Twitch too. Look at, she is cross-pollinating, DMing people in Twitch and YouTube, but she can't be bothered to actually show up. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't met Gifted Lane. Uh, looking forward to it. She's she's awesome. She's super fun. She doesn't know this yet. She's finding this out live, but we are going to be doing a career article on her on the HashiConf website um, oh. in the education section. And she is just now learning that she's going to be doing it. Cool. Shala, cool. somebody from education is going to be reaching out to you to talk to you about this in the <laughs> near future. All right. <laughs> That's enough of me. Um, Mark. Oh. Yeah, that here is we a are. Fantastic presentation slide. Is that okay? So I gotta ask, is that generative? A, did you did you uh, mid-journey that or is that oh, a I, screen and then you put letters on top of it or what? Chris, like I, I do I do all of my artwork in MS Paint on Windows 98. So you're a like you're a, a lying liar. I pixel. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is totally like uh, Dolly or whatever. Yeah, um, nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool, really cool tech. Uh, it it makes some fun fun graphics, but you just got to watch out for the, like the letters because uh, it doesn't do English. It doesn't talky talk very well. So right, yeah. But if I was going to say, did you did you you superimpose the letters on top of it after you had it make the picture, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just yeah, it, didn't, it definitely did not spell terraforming Azure properly. Yeah, <laughs> not if yet. Anyway, give it a good, if that's misspelled, that's on me. I mean, but that looks okay. I, yeah, but we'll go with okay. Yeah, yeah looks good. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for having me on. Like, I, I guess, uh, I, you know, I've been working on on with Terraform a lot, and especially on mm -hmm. Azure. And um, you know, my favorite provider, you know, of course, my favorite provider is Azure RM, but. I thought, you know, a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of Terraform at Microsoft and at Azure, and a lot of it doesn't get like uh, the limelight, you know? So, um, you know, I, that's something I try and do on my channel and through my LinkedIn profile and things like that, like, you know, kind of talk about some of these other providers that actually are Azure tangential. And if you're doing a lot of Terraforming Azure, you know, like me, um, you know, you're going to eventually run into this stuff, right? Um, so that, that's kind of the, the the catalyst of this talk is like, what what else is out there like beyond Azure RM? So, yeah. I'm as, as a, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say AWS aficionado, but as a person who is, has the most exposure with um, AWS, I'm exceptionally, especially excited about this because I'm going to be asking you know, the dumb, dumb questions. I have cloud experience and I have Terraform experience, but I don't have Azure or uh, non Azure RM provider specific experience, nor do I have Azure experience. So I'm, I'm going to be asking questions. You're going to be like, man, well, who is this guy? What, how did he get the show? I don't, I don't even know the answer to that question. So, um, oh, <laughs> and gifted lane is literally doing my job for me. Don't forget to hit the like button, tap the notification bell for more awesome content. <laughs> Thanks. Ring, Sean. That, ring that bell. It it is what it is, folks. That's what social media is. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, tr it truly is. It yeah. brings us all together and tears us apart. But that's a different that's a different episode too. Indeed, indeed. So you know, I get. I guess we'll start on our home planet, like Azure RM, right? So you, for you, like you're Mr. AWS, right? So your home planet when you're 
terraforming AWS, I guess, or terraforming the Amazon. Um, you don't have to say be... that disparagingly. You don't have to be like, for you AWS <laughs> people, it's this. I've, you know, I've, I've terraformed myself some, some Amazon. Okay. Like I, I've, you know, I've done multi-cloud before my life at Microsoft. Like I, a little bit of AWS, a uh, little bit of Google. So hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, AWS would be your home planet, right? Um, gotcha. the, I guess a, a big difference between the AWS provider and the Azure RM provider um, is, you know, with the AWS provider, you, you kind of scope it to a region within AWS. Um, right. Whereas with, so you got an account, you got a, you got a region. With the Azure RM provider, the, I guess the, the most fundamental difference is you're scoped to a subscription. Right. Um, and that means that, you know, you can, you can deploy things to multiple regions um, within the same uh, workspace with the same provider and you don't really have to, you know, do the whole multi-provider block too much, you know, unless you're doing cross subscription stuff, uh, which I actually, you know, kind of posted a video the other day talking about that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's more of a niche uh, hobby. But for, for most, you know, workloads, you know, you're going to be, um, you know, uh, just scope to a subscription is going to be fine. Um, and then you're going to use things like this, this Azure RM resource group, everything's bundled into a resource group, which is a logical container, um, for all of the services that you're going to deploy. Um, so there's, there's kind of like this, uh, built in container. Google cloud has a similar construct, uh, with their projects, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Google cloud's got you know, they, they laid down a little bit more roots with the pro the whole project thing. It, it has a little bit more structure around it, but Azure RM, you know, the resource group, um, it does have, it does act as a security boundary, but really most, most practitioners of Azure RM or Azure use the subscription as kind of the security boundary, um, just from, you know, uh, convenience sake, but, um, the resource group is really a way to group things together by lot by the life cycle of those things. So things that are related to each other, you want to put them in kind of the same resource group. And typically you want to have them all within the same region. Um, so if I want to do multi-region deployments, you know, I'd probably have, you know, a resource group for, for each regional deployment that I, that I have of that multi-region thing, uh, to kind of group those. Would, those, would those be in the same subscription though, or would they be different? Yeah, yeah, they okay, they okay, would gotcha, be, okay. the subscription acts more as like the equivalent of the AWS account. You know, it's gotcha. like okay, kind of a cool. RMAC boundary policy boundary where you can apply policy uniformly. So got it. Yeah, but that that's not really a Terraform thing. That's more of like an Azure taxonomy thing, like the the structure of of how to deploy to Azure. But um, this is this is where most people spend. You know, if you're starting out with Azure you know, in terraforming Azure, this is where you're going to start. Just like with AWS, you're going to start with the AWS provider. Um, and you're going to be doing basically this, um, the, 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 I guess moving on from this planet, right. Cause that's what this talk is about. Right. Um, we have something that, you know, is ever present, you know, when, when we're working in Azure and that's Azure AD, I mean, Entra ID, right. Recently mm -hmm. renamed, but the, yep. you know, most people know it as Azure AD, but, um, the, a lot of people don't even realize there is a, a an Azure ID or an Entra ID provider. Um, and, uh, I, f I find this provider insanely useful, um, just because, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of like in the AWS, I'm trying to map it to AWS land, right? You know, please, the, please don't, uh, you, don't, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the the our audience um it cross pollinates they they have aws chops they have azure chops they have gcp chops so yeah. it's it's um it, it would be a sisyphean effort to try to like map a service to service between all the different clouds and everything so um yeah. just just to let me know what what it does and i'll i'll take care of the the square peg round hole in my own head yeah i mean it's all basically the ad identity Right, that it's, yeah, it's all exactly. identities. When when you connect to Azure, you using the Azure RM provider, you're going to use you know an Entra ID, um, whether it's your user and you're logging in interactively, or using a service principle, or if you're using a managed identity, to to not have you know like any secrets um, being passed around at all. 
you know, that, that you're going to be using Azure AD to, to authenticate. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of time, a lot of Azure services, right, um, have places where they have touch points to enter ID uh, for various, various identities, whether it's a service principal um, or a federated identity credential or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, uh, you, there, there may be a place where you, you would want to provision um, those identities and then tie them into your service um, in one place. So you can kind of, um, you know, stitch those together. And so the Azure AD provider is actually super easy to use with the Azure RM provider because it shares the identity um, that, that, you, that you access uh, or that you initialize, excuse me, Terraform with. So, hmm. um, you know, basically it's, you know, there's, there's almost no additional effort that you have to do in order to start using Azure AD. Um, and so if you're, if you're gonna host like an Azure app service um, and you want to, you know, have, you know, an ident uh, service principle identity for your REST API and a service principle for your, um, your web front end and you want to grant access, you know, hey, I want to allow my web front end to talk to my, you know, uh, REST API, you know, you can mm -hmm. set that up in Azure AD, give it all the grants and permissions, you know, to, um, you know, to access the thing. And, you know, then all that OAuth stuff will be configured and um, you just tie that to the Azure services that you're provisioning and you've got all of the, you know, auth authentication authorization kind of config in HCL and you've got the environment that you're provisioning as well. So um, it just, you know, saves extra friction that you might have to go do that with like the Azure CLI or something like that outside of Terraform. You can kind of weave all that stuff together. So nice. Gotcha. That makes sense. It does. Yes. Yeah. And, and then because we have all these identities, one of the most common ways of using, you know, the Azure AD provider together with uh, um, the, with, with the Azure RM provider is the Azure RM role assignment to basically grant those identities of, of Entra ID access to different things within Azure. This could be Azure AD groups that, you know, you have um, administrators that need, you know, certain access to Key Vault or you have, uh, you know, uh, let, let's say, yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's a pretty good example. But, um, you know, different identities need to access, you know, different Azure services. So using sure. these role assignments can grant that access. We're on this journey, like we're, we're moving out outward from Earth, but um, we, I think it's important to stop and, you know, look at one of our sister planets, right? So this is the surface of <laughs> Venus. It's not an extremely hospitable place. Um, and so, uh, I, I thought it was fitting because, um, there, you know, back, but, you know, w when the, the Azure RM provider does have some areas where it doesn't support every, every feature day zero. Um, mm -hmm. and so back in the olden days, right. Um, we had to kind of use this technique as a polyfill, right. For any time there's a missing resource or a missing feature there's this catch-all resource within the Azure RM provider um, called the template deployment that basically allows us to um, provision whatever is not supported by the Azure RM provider um, using an ARM using an ARM template. Um, hmm. Now, this is kind of like the equivalent of embedding a CloudFormation template in your Terraform code, and that sounds yeah. really nasty. Out, which it is, <laughs> um, but again, it's it's like the you know the the best of two bad options, right? Um, now, luckily, there are there are newer, better options, which we'll get into as we continue our journey. But this one was particularly painful. I had to do this a few times, you know, um, throughout the years, and it, it was never fun. You you inevitably ran into situations where there was churn, where you know the deployment provision the resource and then like forgot that the deployment was there and then you'd you'd have this kind of weird hanging chat out there so it, it was not perfect um but that's why i think the the powers that be at microsoft you know looked at you know this problem and they created the az api provider and this is a super cool provider that basically um allows you to provision any azure resource with day zero support um 
And you, literally this provider, unlike the Azure RM provider, the AWS provider that has hundreds of resources and data sources, this mm -hmm. provider has like base essentially like one resource and one data source. And it, it, that one resource, um, can be morphed into any resource that you want, as long as you know, the resource type and the schema, uh, to deploy that resource, um, it, you know, based on its resource type. So this we, is kind of, yeah, go ahead. How, how, I mean, you would, you would give it like, um, the, the, you would create a block for it and then it would be, it would be looking for a specific key value pair for the thing that you're trying to create. And, and it could be literally anything in this, any of this Azure services. Yeah. Yeah. So just, just oh, like wow. in, just like in cloud formation, there's like a resource type for every, you know, type of, yeah. like a, an EC2 has a resource type. There's a resource type for an Azure VM and the Azure VM takes it to provision an Azure VM to hit the Azure control plane. You pass it in a payload that has, you know, a JSON blob that has oh, yeah. specific, all specific properties for a VM. Now to provision like a Cosmos DB, you're going to have a different resource type and you're going to have a different schema because of course, different attributes and properties are needed to provision a Cosmos DB than to provision a VM. Mm -hmm. um, and so because the Azure control plane arm um, has a kind of a uniform surface area, like this resource type, and then this, you know, block of properties that are is specific for each resource type, we have the ability to create a single resource that provisions them all. Now, one of the downsides of this, I, I, let's, you know, the, one of the downsides of this is some of those resource specific nuances, right? Like um, every attribute, like on the Azure RM provider, the, the authors of that particular Go component have built in some intelligence like, oh, if somebody changes the value of this attribute, I need to do a replace, right? Mm. That kind of stuff goes out the window because we're using one resource to provision it, everything, right? right? So we have, right. We, we're kind of relying on the Azure control plane to kind of do that and rather than Terraform. And so it's kind of like, well, uh, let's hope it works. Um, so it's not perfect, but it definitely, you know, on the upside, it gives day zero support until the Azure RM provider kind of adds that feature yeah, or adds the service, right? Or adds that resource and Makes builds sense. in that kind of nuanced, you know, um, implementation for that specific resource. So it's a, it's a super cool resource. I've used it. I, I, I use it on the regular, but again, usually like my code base is probably 80, 90%, maybe more Azure RM, but a mm. AZ API is a really great, again, poly, this is like the modern polyfill, you know, don't, don't ever go to Venus. Okay. We're going to Mars. It's mission to Mars here. Um, you should be using the a AZ API provider for sure. So gotcha. Nice. Yeah. Um, so now like we're, now we're like out of like core Azure. Now we're like, you know, about to about to cross this plane here um a lot these kind of get unsung you know because all the all the cool kids are talking about you know public cloud these days but you know there are hybrid cloud providers that we have um mm -hmm. for old school ad and azure stack um so you have your on-premises work that can be done that connects up to azure and even azure stack like runs you know uh kind of a, a private cloud version of azure in your own data centers um, so it kind of operates in, in the same fashion as the public cloud. Um, but a lot of people don't, I don't know, really, really think about these, but we, we have this stuff. I don't know if AWS has stuff like this, but, um, these are probably very useful for folks that, that are still maintaining, you know, on-prem and public cloud landscapes. So you'd use them in so the jump. Yeah, go ahead. The, uh, the AD provider will manage um, like, like AD objects on a physical domain controller in, in my hybrid on-prem environment. Correct. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, and basically active directory is the control plane, right? Instead of like right. arms rest API, it's actually hitting AD. Um, Azure stack is more, I, I would say it's probably more similar to, to Azure arm. And that there's probably like a mini version of the ARM control plane running on prem, but <laughs> yeah. hybrid cloud is kind of a big deal for Microsoft because I mean we, we're trying to help people like 
multi-cloud hybrid cloud. That's kind of our jam. So um, automation platforms. So uh, we have two big ones. Um, there are more out there, um, you know, Git, GitLab and all the things, but I, you know, I just wanted to share like the, the Microsoft provider domain, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. There's plenty of stuff out there in the galaxy, but the, the Azure, these are two, two ones, two of the ones that I work with a lot. I've been building new, these new modules that I dubbed my AT-ATs. Um, now we're getting into Star Wars here, but um, automate the automation. Don't cross the streams. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't cross the streams. Yeah, but ATAT -AT, automate the automation with Terraform. And so with these with these this module type, basically, I'm automating you know the the source code repositories, the pipelines, the Git flow, you know all of that stuff that you know you would normally click to deploy mm -hmm. in that automation platform. Um, so that you can really, really quickly get up and running with uh, with Terraform uh, to, to start provisioning to the, to the actual control planes that you want to provision to. So um, these provide these are the providers that make that possible. So you can stand up all of that taxonomy that you have in you know your source control provider and your pipelining tool. So Azure DevOps has pipelines and GitHub action GitHub has GitHub Actions. Mm -hmm. um, and Things is essentially run YAML files that provision stuff out there. So um, mm. this is really powerful too. I think you like the, the Terraform Terraform cloud provider is kind of similar to these um, mm -hmm. in that yep. you can automate the automation. So I've, um, I've actually I was playing with the uh, the GitHub provider a couple of days ago. I was actually uh, running the the GitHub provider using code spaces, and I had to finagle and wiggle the code space a little bit so that it could actually delete and create repos on its own. Because uh, uh, natively, you can't do that because it's trying not to delete itself. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's yeah. it's really slick. Yeah the the GitHub the GitHub provider has is is very rich, uh, very mm -hmm. rich. I, I've been very pleased with what I can do with that. Um, but yeah, I would encourage anybody to go check out um, my GitHub ATAT -AT or the Azure DevOps ATAT -AT modules that I've been developing. A couple of couple of the people in the Azure Terraformer community have already submitted PRs for them, so um, we're trying we're trying to make them better, you know. But it's pretty cool stuff. Um, and, uh, for, for those listening in the audience, we are going to put links to all of all of the uh, the repos and all of that stuff that that Mark's got. So. We we will make sure that you have access to all of this after the after the show is done. Yeah, cool. Unless um, unless you have links coming up or QR codes coming in the slides, I don't know what you got. <laughs> nah, nah, I don't. I, I don't. I just okay. have some. Uh, just we'll some make good... we'll make sure that that put we put them in the show notes so people can click on them. Yeah, good. Yeah, good call. Good call. Um, next next one, I'm kind of cheating here a little bit, I guess, but you know, I think we're <laughs> we're moving out of like. Uh, core core Microsoft territory, but I think these are important use cases of like working with other providers and mashing mm -hmm. them up with with Azure providers. So, as as an Azure you know Terraformer practitioner, like you're going to be most likely you're going to encounter situations where you're going to be taking one of the core Azure providers and mashing it up with some other control plane. Kubernetes is just one of those examples, and we'll get to more later. Um, but this is one of the most powerful things about Terraform that I that I talk about, um, and it it really allows you to kind of create layers uh, within your architecture and within your deployment strategy uh, to remove unnecessary friction. Um, and so, just right here, like we're using the Azure RM provider to provision a Kubernetes cluster, but then right away we can just drop into the Kubernetes provider um, and provision individual, you know, Kubernetes resources, namespaces services, deployments, pods, you know, you name it. Um, and then we can also deploy like Helm charts using the Helm provider. Um, and so uh, it just provides a very cohesive uh, deployment experience for managing stuff in Kubernetes. I think David Wright um, is gonna be showing a pretty cool demo of this um, at Build, which is coming up soon. So uh, definitely go check out his talk. He's a, he's a HashiCorp guy, um, so. He is. I, I reviewed a CFP yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for hashy days or? Uh, yeah. For if if yes, if if I'm I, I'm I'm muddling them in my head. There's a bunch of them coming up now. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, like moving on to additional providers where you're going to run into this um, when you have third party observability stacks, right? Those providers can can tie into Azure um, in different ways. You know, some some third party uh, platforms, for example, I'll look at Datadog here, a, pa a pattern that they use when, of course, they have to support multi cloud, right? So they're going to have all sorts of resources for their own internal platform, uh, but they'll they'll typically have like um, an integration resource or a connector resource for each of the clouds, like AWS, Azure, GCP, whatever. Um, so this is an example of like where that resource within the Datadog provider, you know, actually would take input from, in this case, the Azure AD provider. So you provision a service principle that's going to grant Datadog's Datadog access that it needs to talk to Azure and all the things. And then you use the Datadog provider to, um, you know, set all that up within the Datadog, within Datadog's own platform. Uh, another like technique, and this is, you know, similar to Kubernetes um, and uh, one of the providers that, that I have a lot of hands-on experience with is the Grafana uh, provider. This is again, where we have two control planes one is the Azure control plane where we provision an Azure managed service of Grafana. And then we kind of piggyback off that and take the connection information out of what we just provisioned to Azure and then pass it forward to the Grafana provider so that we can provision all the things within Grafana as a control plane itself. Oh, so nice. um, it that's, uh, yeah, a lot, lot of stuff you can do. Um, you know, when you kind of match these providers together. And then same same thing with uh, authentication and authorization. Um, you know, there's different providers out there. Of course, they're going to tie into Entra ID um, and they kind of follow a similar pattern, you know, as the as, as data, the Datadog example, where they have these connect connector resources within their own provider, but then you, you know, connect the Azure AD identities that you want to grant, you know, uh, synchronization with or federation with uh, right. to connect out. So if you're using third party authentication providers like Auth0, Octoping, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, this is going to be a common thing that you're going to set up and you'll probably have to manage it like internally. Um, and you can do that with the combination of their provider and our providers to make it pretty, pretty easy. I just recently did a deep dive um, for, for the GitHub Foundation certification article that I wrote for Free Code Camp. I, I spent a lot of time uh, talking about authentication with Entra <laughs> ID for uh, you know GitHub Enterprise and whatnot. So this this is all um, very recent and fresh for me right now. I didn't I didn't do it for Azure though, mm. obviously. <laughs> and and that that's kind of that's why there's like boundaries between you know these just and why it's pluggable, right? Like mm -hmm. you can use the GitHub provider and and never talk to Entra ID. Like it's a it's okay. Um, now, like talking about databases, um, again, we kind of have two different patterns that we see here. Um, mm -hmm. So there's many different database providers out there, like within the re provider registry. Um, the Ostrich, uh, Cassandra managed service, the Atlas, I've used that one personally um, for Mon uh, managed MongoDB uh, databases. Um, and these are all kind of similar in that um, these are managed services that are hosted by, you know, Mongo Atlas or Astro Data Stacks, I think. Um, whoever, whoever's like the main, like uh, owner of that, and they ho the hosted provider of that. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of because of because of the nature of the database, like a lot of times people want to connect it privately over private networks, and the easiest and most inexpensive way to do that is if it's actually hosted on the same cloud platform that you're hosted on, right? Right. Um, so that you can take advantage of ENet peering and things like that, as opposed to more expensive things that'll probably rack up egress and have additional mm -hmm. latency. So these all kind of follow that same pattern where they, you when you provision a cluster on their platform, you can opt to select a cloud provider that you want it to be uh, a resident of, right? And so, just by switching that, you know, flipping that switch, you pick between AWS or pick between Azure or whatever, um, whichever ones are supported. And then 
the, the Astra or the Atlas provider is going to go stand up an instance of their managed service within their own subscriptions, not your subscriptions, but like Atlas's subscriptions for Azure, um, such that um, it'll be uh, uh, available for you to connect through private networking and things like that. So um, if you're taking advantage of database as a service offerings, you know, you're probably yeah. going to run into something like this. So yeah. Have, have you ever used As uh, Atlas or Astra or any of these things? Um, back when, back when I was in EA, I had a gig where they were using Atlas um, for, for a deployment. And at the time, uh, there was a reason why that something about the, they, they tried, they tried to leverage this, but the they di atlas didn't have uh instances available in the in the not it wasn't the region it was the availability zones that they needed it to be in or something mm -hmm. and so and and because of that the um the the fees were going to be exorbitant it was a it was a very high high transactional um very very chatty database and and they were like ah we can't do it so they had mm -hmm. they had to sp um, do it um a different way yeah yeah, uh, sometimes that happens. You know, capacity capacity is a thing. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a it was a not not a U.S. East one. I've I've heard about that about about AWS. It seems like that's a, a running gag, but it, um, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, another, another like the the other option again, kind of like Kubernetes, um, there where where and Grafana, where we have an Azure provisioned resource, in this case, like a Custo cluster. This is an append only database, excuse me, um, that we have on Azure. Um, it's, I think it used to be called Custo. I think it's now called Azure Data Explorer, um, but there's a, a community provider that's very, very good. I, I don't, I, I've not actually met the maintainer, um, but uh, I've used the provider um, and love it. Um, hmm. And it basically, you know, you provision a, a Custo cluster, um, which is this big database um, and, and with with multiple nodes and all this stuff. Um, and then you can provision the schema, you know, as tables or functions and and like all, all these different bells and whistles through the ADX provider, like that second layer. So um, pretty, uh, pretty cool way to manage your your database schema. Um, you know, if, especially for append only databases, um, you know, it worked out well for, for my use cases, but it probably not, you know, uh, probably not for the faint of heart, but I was going to say, did you have to get the DBAs involved in this? To, I mean, did the DBAs have to learn HCL or that, that's, that seems, uh, that, that's a, that's a very cool use case, but that I can, I can see some sharp edges on that immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And there's probably better better tools for some of the more common databases, but with with ADX, um, you know, it's it's a it's a tool that's used a lot um, internally at Microsoft, and um, mm -hmm. we use it just mainly for telemetry, right? So um, that that's the use case that we used that that my team used it for, um, and so um, you know, we we were writing our own functions and we were writing our own you know all, all of the own things so um gotcha. we i hope they i hope they haven't changed it from the name Custo cluster because that is hilarious uh <laughs> and if if uh you know getting getting an executive to say that over and over again uh would be i i, I would deliberately make somebody do that okay yeah um i digress I, it is i mean Custo, I kql like it uses its own like uh query language kql um Custo, I don't even know. Custo query language. Custo query language, I presume. Uh, I'm don't quote guessing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's kind of like Link. If you are from the C sharp world, it's like the the select statements are at the end, unlike TC4, mm -hmm. where it's like you do select star from blah blah blah. You start with the from mm -hmm. and then you do select that. Uh, I digress. Um, anyways, yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, no, I'm good. Yeah. So the last one, um, which I'm looking forward to playing around with more, and uh, I'm again, I'm cheating. Like Microsoft didn't create this provider. Um, I don't even know, like, is this if it's a meme provider or not? But like, uh, there is a Minecraft provider out there. It only it only does blocks. Um, but uh, I was, you know, I, I 
I'm a big fan of Minecraft and I was thinking this year, maybe I might kick around uh, some more Minecraft projects um, mm -hmm. and see if I see what I can do with this provider to, you know, uh, do some fun stuff on my Azure Linux virtual machines around a Minecraft. But since it is a Microsoft property, I, I thought I'd, I thought I'd, I'd include it in here, but um, yeah. So again, same, same kind of concept. Um, you provision something with Azure, in this case, a virtual, a Linux virtual machine, and then you install M Minecraft on it and Minecraft server acts as kind of like the control plane that you can manage uh, using Terraform. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the end of the providers. Do you play Minecraft, Chris? I know you've been hitting me up with some some weird game that you've been playing recently. A lot of Hell, Helldiver. <laughs> Hell, Helldiver. Yeah. yeah. So not so not not in the Minecraft, huh? Well, if, funny you should ask that. My nephew Lucas was huge into Minecraft for a very long time, and because I wanted to hang out with him and everything, I also played Minecraft with him he is the person that is actually playing Helldiver with me now. So <laughs> I so I used to play Minecraft uh, when Lucas was playing it. I'm now playing Helldiver because he's playing that now. Um, but no, I, I did I did play it for a hot minute. Um, I never had like my own server or anything. Um, I, mm -hmm. I never had the, the foam ax uh, pinned to the wall. Um, but yeah, I, I played for I played for a little bit. I, I have not used Terraform to provision a uh, Minecraft for me yet. Uh, that's too bad. That's too, I, I did that on my channel. It was a lot of fun. I, I even used Packer to uh, to build the the Minecraft. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I, I need... I, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna uh, hold on. Let's let's put it up on the um, Azure Terraformer Minecraft. There we go. Yeah, I'm not I'm not making this up. Uh, Yes. Oh, I, I believe you. I just want to put it, I just want to put it up in the uh, in the chat so people can see it. Oh, 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 in the chat. Oh, I can't see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of used it as a. Oh, you did a bunch of it. Nice. As a fun example of, because because really, like when I started that Minecraft series, I took, mm -hmm. I, I I followed the process that that we often follow in the enterprise when we go to automate something that's been done manually for years. You mm -hmm. got you got some run book that some guy wrote you know, years ago that's collecting dust that, that has like the steps to install the thing. And mm -hmm. yeah. then, then you go through this process of like automating that. Right. Um, and so I converted this run book that I found on the internet, um, of how to install, you know, bedrock Minecraft. I, I got into this cause my son, same, same thing as you, like your nephew, like my son, mm -hmm. he was like, he, he wanted his own Minecraft server and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, I tried to, for, there was like 15 seconds where like he was going to learn Linux and do it himself. And then like he, you know, his eyes glazed over and I, I ended up doing I it. Just, I just want to, I just want to make, make blocks and build things. I don't yeah. want to do this Linux stuff. Exactly. He likes to, he likes to PVP, you know, like fight in Minecraft, yep. which yep. I never understood. Like, cause it's like, it's the dumbest fighting. You just like take an ax and, bonk, you know, bonk, bonk. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's not like it's uh you know like a lightsaber fight or anything but uh but, but yeah the the minecraft series like i think it it parallels you know how you know the same muscles that you would have to exercise to automate like a commercial off-the-shelf software package you know in the enterprise you yeah. know there's this thing that wasn't designed for the cloud you know there's you know a run book about how to you know, manually install it from a terminal. Um, how do we get this into, you know, a Packer template, build a Packer image, and then how do we take that Packer image and provision it, uh, you know, uh, you know, to, to a cloud and then do kind of the last, the last mile initial initialization using, um, you know, kind of the user info and stuff like that when you set up the VM finally. So very um, fun. I posted yeah. the uh, the link for your playlist for all all of the uh, the Minecraft Minecraft episodes, um, so our viewers can see that too. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I almost said Minecraft. Uh, <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I might I might convert one of my home servers in my home lab to uh, Proxmox this year, and mm -hmm. do some fun with the Proxmox uh, Terraform provider with 
with Minecraft. So we'll we'll see we'll see what's coming there. But uh, where was I? So the the last thing is modules, right? And this is mm. you know this is really all the stars in the sky, so to speak, right? Um, not to get all you know, philosophical, but you know there's so many different you know ways and patterns to use Azure. Um, and to provide, to create architectures on Azure, to build applications on Azure. Um, one of the things that, you know, my colleagues at Microsoft, I'm not part of this team at all, but, you know, I, I know a bunch of them just for reasons. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're building these, you know, uh, modules called Azure verified modules. And, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're kind of encapsulating the best practices from, you know, kind of harvesting from. Uh, Microsoft's well-architected framework, uh, you know, to to help infuse those best practices, so you don't have to go reinvent the wheel every time. Um, so that's a that's a th you'll see that a lot in, you know, in, um, on the LinkedIn. You know, people are talking like there's new modules that are being released, and these are these are modules that are actually maintained by Microsoft, by FTS at Microsoft, and. Um, I, I think I think they even have like an SLA form and stuff, so you can log issues and like we'll go fix them. So, oh, um, nice. so we're taking it really seriously. So uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, I, I I do want to shout out. There are a couple experimental uh, providers out there that are related to the modules. Um, so if you're if you're out there spelunking the registry, um, you might see these, uh, but. Just be, keep in mind that these are, you know, some things, you know, that we're kicking around. Um, probably a good person to talk about this is Matt White, um, one of my colleagues and uh, co-conspirators, you know, and mm -hmm. terraforming mm -hmm. stuff. Um, uh, he, he, I think, I think he's probably the author of both of those. But um, and then Mod TM, that's a, that's a telemetry module that we built just to kind of capture the usage of some of our in, internal modules that we use. So, yeah, um, we're building a lot of mo mo Terraform modules at Microsoft and we're we're taking it pretty seriously. So if you're terraforming Azure, you should definitely be aware of the Azure verified modules and try and take advantage of them as much as possible. That is um, some super valuable information right there. Um, I didn't. I did not know about those. I, I know that. I know that um, providers are starting starting to create like validated designs and you know verified modules and stuff like that. So that's that's super slick. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it'll just they'll they'll just keep keep pumping out more of them, you know, and mm -hmm. it'll just get easier and easier. So yeah, that's uh, it easier to build. Yeah, that, that was kind of what I had to share with today. So I awesome. hope I hope. Everybody, like probably the, the most important thing is, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of Terraform that happens at Microsoft and at Azure, and um, you know Azure RM, you know while while it has a special place in, in our hearts, um, it's not it's not the end of your Terraforming journey on on Azure. This is this is wonderful, um, Mark Tinderholt. Thank you very much, uh, folks. Have a wonderful evening, and we will see you again next time. Bye. Happy Azure Terraforming.